So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find that first missing angle. Because right now, remember we have two of the sides and we should have one of the angles. So we're gonna find the first missing angle. That's gonna be done using the law of sines. So here's automatically where we get into the ambiguous case. Because remember, from some of our previous sections, we found that there were two different values in the first and second quadrant that could have the same value of sine. So we're going to check in our second step to see, like, could there be another possibility? Basically, is there room for another angle to fit inside of my triangle? And you'll see what we mean once we actually start looking at some specific examples. Um, so step two is we are going to check for a second possibility. And you will see exactly what that means once we start looking at examples. So now at this point, we either have zero, one, or two possibilities for our first angle. Um, either there isn't room for it at all, that's when we'd have zero. Either there's only room for that one possible angle, that's when we'd have one. Or it's possible that we could have an angle in the first quadrant or second quadrant, that's when we'd have two. So then at this point, for step three and step four, I'm going to write the possibility of having either, either one or two. So then we find the third angle. And I'm going to write angles in parentheses because we might have that second possibility. And then same thing with our last side. So we're going to find our third side, but we might be in a scenario where we have a second case. So I'm going to throw sides in parentheses too. So let's keep this right on the screen so we can go through our cases. So we've got one angle and then two sides. So we're going to first check for our first missing angle. All right, so that's going to be the law of sine set up with these two values. So sine of big Q divided by little q equals the sine of big N divided by little n. All right, so we're gonna work through this. We're gonna try to solve for N. So we're gonna start by multiplying both sides by eight, and then we'll get a decimal approximation for that left-hand side. So let me show you what that looks like. So we've got, in a little fraction, eight times the sine of 110, and then divided by 11. So that gives us this, 0.683. is equal to the sine of n. So remember our little inverse sine swap that we had a few sections ago. If we know that this is true, then that means that the sine inverse of this value will give us n. All right, so we got this. So we can take the sine inverse, and then I would say you just go up and, and grab that and paste it so we get an exact value. So we get 43.1. Okay, so first thing we want to do is check to see if there's room for that angle. So we have 110, there's definitely room for this angle. All right, so we have this possibility. Next thing we're going to check is check the reference angle in the second quadrant, which we do by doing 180 minus 43.1. So this would be the value in the second quadrant that has the exact same sign. It also has a sign of 0.683. So let me just show you. Sign of this also comes out to be 0.683. So this is a possibility as well. However, there's no room for this angle and this angle within the same quadrant. So for this one, we only have one solution. Okay, so this one's gonna have one solution. So let's carry on and continue with this one solution. So next thing we're gonna do, we didn't have that second possibility, so now we're gonna find our third angle. Our third angle, P, we get by just subtracting these angles from 180. So subtract away angle Q, Subtract away angle N, and we will be left with our last one. So minus 110, minus 43.1. So our last angle is 26.9 degrees. And then step four is to find the third side. All right, so third side would be side P, so we do that using the law of sines. So this time, let's do the sides in the numerator. Okay, so if we have little q over the sine of q equals little p over the sine of P. Okay, so all we do to get little p is multiply both sides by this. Okay, so this will cancel. I'm just going to plug this right into the calculator. So set up a little fraction. We've got the sine of 26.9 times 11, whoops, times 11, and then over the sine of 110. Okay, so we get about 5.3. So little p equals about 5.3. So that's what we mean when we say to find, so to solve the triangle. All right, so we've got all of these values right here. 
Let's solve this one. We've got D, E, F. So step one is to find the first missing angle. So we find the first missing angle using the law of sines. So we have sine of E over little e equals the sine of F over little f. Okay, so what we're going to do here to get the f by itself is multiply both sides by 9. So these will cancel. Let's plug this into the calculator. So in a fraction, we have 9 times the sine of 52 degrees. That's divided by 5. So it gives us this value right here, about 1.418. Okay, and then remember we do a little inverse sine thing. Okay, so to find F, I'm going to hit my inverse sine button and then just paste this right in there so I can get an exact value. So this is undefined. All right, so F is undefined. So what that means is that there is no solution. Okay, so that means there's basically no possible triangle that would have these measurements. All right, let's do one more example here. We've got X, Y, Z. We have our first angle, and then we've got two other measurements here. So first thing we want to find is angle Z. So let's set up sine of x over little x equals sine of z over little z. So we start by multiplying both sides by 15. These 15s will cancel. I will plug this into my calculator. So a little fraction. We've got 15 times the sine of 28 and then over 9. So it gives me this value, about 0.782. Okay, so to find it, I take the inverse sine of 0.782, and that's going to give me z. So let me plug that in. So press the inverse sine button and copy-paste this. So this is my value. I get about 51.5. Okay, so 51.5 definitely fits in that triangle. There's plenty of room for it. Let's see what the angle in the second quadrant would look like. If I do 180 minus 51.5, could be 128.5, and there actually still is room for that and within you know the 180 degrees that we get. So this is our first two different possibilities, so we're going to set these up. So that's my one possibility. My second possibility would be 180 minus 51.5, which turned out to be 128.5. Okay, so let's start these off. So this is the first one we have two possibilities. So two different possibilities for Z, which means two different possibilities for Y. So for both of these, we have 180 minus X minus Z to give us this value for Y. So this would be 180 minus x minus z, and that leaves us with 23.5 degrees for y. Now we're going to have a different measurement for y over here, because we have a different measurement for z. So here y is 180 total, minus 28 for x, minus this value for z, so that'll give us a different measurement for y. So 180 minus x minus this measurement for z, and that gives us 100.5. Okay, so two different values of y means two different values of little y. So finally, we can do law of sines to find that last little side measurement. Okay, so we're going to do little x over the sine of x equals little y over the sine of y. Okay, so for this one to get little y by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by the sine of 23.5. Okay, so here this will cancel, and then I just plug this whole thing in to get little y. So a little fraction here. I have the sine of 23.5 times 9, and then over the sine of 28. Okay, so this gives me about 7.6 for this version of little y. And then here, smaller angle means smaller side. Here I'm going to have a side that's much bigger than 7.6 because my angle is much bigger. So let's set this up. So little x over the sine of x equals little y over the sine of y. So this one's definitely going to be bigger. Same step, though. We still multiply both sides by this. And I'm going to plug it into my calculator. So plug this thing in. I'm actually just going to copy and paste this 
and change this angle to 100.5. So that gives me 18.8, .8, so definitely a much bigger side length. So those are by two different possible triangles. Remember, you're always checking to see what the second quadrant, because here's a first angle, or first quadrant angle Z. Here's a second quadrant angle Z. Make sure you check to see where your possibilities are. Um, and I'm going to cut example four just because of time.